Hey guys, Dom here, and today I thought I'd try out something new on this channel, something which I'd hope would develop into a kind of series where I kind of look at archetypes or just any sort of similarities between cards already in the game and then try and expand upon them, giving them more synergy within the game. And hopefully, yeah, people like this and I can do this on a weekly basis. But anyway, let's just get into today's archetype. So I thought I'd start this series off with an archetype that I used to really like when I was getting into Legends and started buying the campaign packs, and that was the Fact Totems, which are basically just servants of Sofasil, which live in the Clockwork City. You know, they're the regular citizens, and they all have this kind of bond with each other, hence their assemble ability. And yeah, as there's only five cards already in the game of this type, one of which is mainly used just because it can reflect of everything in the game or on its type basis I thought I'd see what else I could add to it but before we get into that and the cards I've made we should look over what's good about fact totems their assemble feature is really cool because it means that when you get into the later bits of the game every single one of these units that you're dropping really does kind of make your opponent think that they need to deal with it so obviously having a few more of them would make it a lot more powerful and as it's a neutral archetype, it could fit into any kind of deck whatsoever. Which is good because it just doesn't limit you to having to force any sort of decks and playstyles. But let's get into the actual kind of meaty bit of the video and show you the custom cards. So we're going to start off with an action called Remains of Brass Fortress. Or if I was feeling a bit more wordy on my titles, I would have named it Remains of THE Brass Fortress which is an action which works just like Bedlam and puts two assembled prototypes in hand and this is an example of an assembled prototype here it's a 1-1-1 one, one, one with assemble plus one health or plus one um, health to your units uh, so this is basically just something that you'd either play very early on so every single one of your assembled units would also have this kind of nice little heal on you or be a bit stronger or you'd play it late game, so these are really menacing. And it's quite nice to have a card like this, which isn't restricted to being played at a certain point of the game. Okay, so next we have the Assembled Artifact, and I know that is a picture of the Heart of Lorcan. I'm sorry, I was just looking for one and I couldn't really find anything that good. But this is the kind of deck's form of draw power, as you play it, you draw a card, and if it's a Factotum, you get a chance of drawing another card. Obviously, if, you know, you do just draw another random card, this was just four Magicka taken out of you for a turn. But it is quite nice for just thinning down through your deck. There's not really much else to say about it. I mean, I was going to give it some extra assemble effects when you play it, but I was worried I'd go too much over the limit with assemble effects, and that would be a bit unfair, and I could see a lot of comments then complaining about me doing that. Next, we have the Assembled Overseer, who is based off the Automata Incarnum Overseer System, or AOS, or however the flip you meant to say it. And this is a 4 cost 2 2, which, when summoned, gains the assemble ability of the top factotum of your deck. And you may be thinking that's kind of a waste for a 4 cost, but this also gives you information on which one of the factotums you're going to draw next. And obviously, that does mean, oh, I'll get that same ability again, but. It's just nice to have that bit of information as well as a nice assemblability to kind of work together. I feel like it's really what the archetype is meant to be built around. After this, I thought I'd design some Factotum cards which don't actually have an assemblability because I thought it would be a bit overpowered if these ones had an assemblability with the keywords I planned on giving them. For example, Assembled Pursuer that has charge. Imagine every single one of your creatures late game having charge and being like eight eights with several keywords yeah that that would just be completely busted and i don't think i'm willing to put you guys through viewing something as disgusting as that but i feel like it'd be nice if something in this archetype did have charge as well as that i thought ward would be really nice to have for say like a simple bulwark here and you know with your guard as well from the assembled guard <laughs> um <laughs> yeah it'd be good to have that really big defensive wall late game but obviously if you do draw an early game it's not going to be that good 
and really means that this kind of card's only going to be run in a deck made for Factotums. Finally, we have a really top tier legendary trio, which is Sunder, Keening, and Wraithguard. And I've decided to slightly tinker them from the campaign and make them a bit more balanced and usable, but also still relevant for the multiplayer. So first we have Sunder, which is a free cost support with two uses, and when activated a Factotum reuses its assemble ability and can attack in both lanes, but if there's a guard, it can't directly attack your opponent. So this is just quite nice for getting off as many assemble abilities as you can, and obviously just that fact of it can attack in both lanes means that if you've stacked up in one lane and your opponent's then playing a movement deck or has just stacked up in the other lane, you can start to still make use of your units. Um, next we have Keening, which is a 5 cost, free use, activate, deal 1 damage to a creature for every one Factotum in your graveyard. So this would basically work like Goldbrand does, but because if it's used late game, it would be, say, if you had four Factotums in the graveyard, it would just be four Lightning Bolts, pretty much. It's just a nice way of doing a bit of damage and removal without throwing your units in there. And finally, we have Wraith Guard, which is the first Factotum card you summon on either turn, gains a ward. Just because I feel like, yes, I don't want to give every single one of them a ward through Assemble, but maybe one or one per turn is just quite fair and balanced. But other than that, that's pretty much the end of the video. If you enjoyed this kind of archetype improvement that I've done, please obviously like and subscribe. And if you want to see a certain archetype done, say, I don't know, werewolves, uh, just comment it. And, you know, if you want to throw in a few ideas, I could also try and implement that. And yeah, I just really want to see if people enjoy this and want to see more of this just kind of random speculation videos. It's just something different for the channel. And, yeah, I don't know what I'll say. So I guess I'll see you next time, maybe. It's up to you, I guess.